All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where in the world you are. I'm Christine Comerford from Smart Tribes Institute. And today we're going to talk about how you can create your own smart tribe and the difference between a tribe and a team and the process to follow that has been proven that has worked with over a thousand companies of all different shapes and sizes in all different industries. So grab a cup of coffee, grab a glass of water, grab paper and pen, um, fire up a new Word doc, whatever it is that you need to do, because you're definitely going to want to take some notes. Um, afterwards, we are going to send you the, um, the replay, uh, any other things that I mentioned. Um, at this point, we're going to have the slides and then the uh, how to launch your Smart Tribe infographic with Step by Step. Those are the two goodies we're going to send you guys afterwards. All right, cool. Um, I think uh, we are at the top of the hour, so let's go ahead and start. Oh, also important to just keep typing your questions and to chat. We had about six questions that were pre-submitted, so I'll answer those first, and then everybody else just uh, type into chat as questions come up. This is gonna be a meat and potatoes, you know, practical, what do I do next? Okay, cool. So for those of you who aren't familiar with our work, what we do at Smart Tribes Institute is neuroscience-based coaching, executive coaching, leadership coaching, culture coaching, and workshops. And what we do in the workshops, and you'll see some of them described at a high level, is that's how we get everybody on board and moving forward. So just to kind of summarize, um, cultural change, company growth, occurs by people being emotionally engaged, aligned and enrolled, knowing where we're going, why we're going there, how we're gonna get there, what getting there means, uh, when we wanna get there. So leadership, it's our job to be super clear on that and then also to give people our tools to help them move forward. So we are voted top 50 human behavior experts and then in the top 100 global employee engagement influencers. We come at this from a deep operational expertise. So we marry, if you will, we've all been operators at the company, so we're not uh, PhDs and shrinks, we're actual company builders. And then we combine the neuroscience and then we add in mindfulness as well and it works great. So. We've worked with all different sizes of companies all over the place. Um, it doesn't really matter the culture you're in, um, the location you're in, the geography. Humans are humans, and this is about human behavior. So as a leader, growth is your job. And as you guys have seen this before, many of you have seen this chart, our inflection point chart. And what's so interesting is that at each revenue inflection point, we have a new company. Have you guys noticed this? Um, Sometimes the people need to be shifted into new roles. Sometimes new, new people need to be brought in. The purple line across the top is the people stuff. So if you're going to 50 million, for instance, you need to have the 10 million and 25 million people, money, model things in place if you're going to get to 50 and actually be able to then move beyond it. So we have a lot of clients right now that are going to 50 million in revenue, 100 million in revenue. We've got one client right now, we're working very intensely to get them to half a billion in revenue. And we need to make sure all the other stuff is, is happening because otherwise, you've seen this before, a company can't seem to break through. It'll, it'll just keep kind of touching the next inflection point and sliding back and touching it and sliding back and swirling around. And then eventually, yikes, sliding back to the prior inflection point. So it's taken us about 30 years to figure this out. So <laughs> this is one of the recipes, navigating inflection points, recipe number one for you. If you fulfill what's on this chart, you will get to the next inflection point. What's gonna help you get beyond that, we're also gonna talk about today because we need to have people that are in the right emotional state that are getting full access to their prefrontal cortex, decision-making, visioning, problem-solving, et cetera. So let's go. Good, so today, why you need a tribe, a smart tribe versus a team. And let's just take a second talking about that. So for those of you who haven't worked with us before, the difference between a team of people and a smart tribe is that the smart tribe is working in all three parts of their brain. So that means the reptilian brain, which is responsible for stimulus response machine, uh, functions, if you will, uh, life support systems, if you will, safe or not, dead or not. 
uh, the uh, compulsive behaviors, the reactive behaviors, to keeping the body safe. The mammalian brain is about keeping the emotional being safe. Uh, that's where, where we have a lot of the fight, flight, freeze, and then the friend or foe re response. Are you like me? Are you not like me? Should I bond with you? Should I be concerned about you? And then the prefrontal cortex in the neocortex, most evolved part of the brain, this is where we have problem solving, language skills, decision making, et cetera. The more we have all, all of our team members working in all three parts of their brain, as opposed to where many people are at work, fight, flight, freeze, they're okay, fight, flight, freeze, they're okay, fight, flight, freeze. We want to have people very rarely going into what we call critter state, fight, flight, freeze, and spending a lot more time in all three parts of their brain, the balanced brain, the smart state. More people in the smart state, more smart tribe, and we'll show you the ROI of that. The ROI is profound, 35 to 50% more productive. You don't need to hire more people. You need to get your people in their smart state. We'll show you how to do that. Um, gosh, closing sales up to 50% faster. Again, you don't need a ton more salespeople. You need your salespeople in their smart state. Marketing messages, 300% more effective. Again, <laughs> you need your marketing people in their smart state. Uh, innovation occurring 48% faster. You need more engineers in their smart state, et cetera. So we're going to go through three tracks, leadership, culture, and sales and marketing to give you the recipe and the action plan. So we don't necessarily need a number of people associated together in some joint action. We need a group of people who are focused, clear, accountable, ownership oriented, consistently outselling, et cetera. Okay. Outselling, um, outperforming, et cetera. So, hey, thanks, Stephen. Yeah. Start to type in your questions, guys. And we will um, we'll take a little break for questions, Stephen, and we'll get to yours in just a, a couple minutes. So this is the gold. Here's the roadmap. Um, we're going to give you what to do when, but here's the ROI. Because a lot of times when we are doing cultural change and behavior change, leadership might say, oh, that's squishy. Okay, it's not. It's actually ROI. The numbers you're seeing here are uh, from over 1,000 companies over the past 30 years. Um, there are more numbers that we have, but here's the most important ones I wanted to focus on today. Take a moment and think about what your top priority is. Uh, and you might determine your top priority, frankly, by looking at the ROI. What ROI will move the needle for you most pronto? So if it's leadership, maybe you're going, you know, I want my leaders 35% plus more productive. I want them to have five to 15 more hours per week to do strategic work and to get out of the weeds and to give that work to their people and to not micromanage, et cetera. You know what? We really want to be able to increase our revenue. Or you might say, you know, I want increased engagement. I want our people to be saying, thank God it's Monday. I want our retention, because recruiting is challenging, especially right now. I want our retention to be higher. We want to retain 90% plus of our people. We want to have 22% increased profit per employee or greater. A lot of our clients love that, and they just say, come on in, help us get more profit per employee. Maybe marketing and sales is your priority. More effective marketing messages. You want 300% plus more effective there. You want 400% plus more inbound leads coming in. Or you want just to close those sales faster. So look at the timelines because we want to be uh, realistic about this. If you follow our programs, I have to give you that caveat, then in three to six months, you'll see the three to six months uh, ROI, right? Six to 12 months because we can't totally control it. You know, we don't work at your company. We can't be there all the time, but we can give you the tools, support you in implementing, coaching you through them, et cetera. And then um, 12 to 18 months is the third ROI point. Most clients get their smart tribe totally locked and loaded, depending on where we start. We'll talk about assess, act, ROI in a sec, but depending on where they start, they create their smart tribe in about... 12 months to three years, and it just depends where you start. Aha. So we're going to talk about where you start in just a sec. Throughout this call, we're going to be reminding you to go to strategysessionnow.com to sign up or request a strategy session if you want our help to create your smart tribe. Okay, here's your launch guide. Woo. We're going to send you a nice big PDF of this so you can hang it on your wall and you can start to map. 
So here's the path for leadership, and then we're going to drill down on each path. So first, schedule a strategy session. Let's find out what your priorities are. Um, then we're going to do an assessment. Remember what I said earlier? We assess, then we create the action plan, and then you get the ROI. You have to do them in that order because we have to know what your priorities are so we'll know what tools to use when. So schedule the strategy session, do the assessment, um, capture a quick win, um, and then um, start leadership coaching. You're going to want to do neuroscience of leadership course first, and then the micro learnings. Eight one day workshop, two webinars, eight little baby micro learnings that really get all these tools to drop into the brain. Okay, then we do the rest of them. So when we follow the leadership path, uh, Citizant that we've worked with for the past um, almost a year, we're not quite at a year yet, revenue is up, profit is up, enterprise value is at an all time high, our smart tribe is making all the difference. That's what the CEO says. So now let's look at the culture path, and then I'm going to show you the exact tools and when to use them. Culture path. Schedule your strategy session. Take the emotional resilience assessment. You know what I'm going to do? Um, when we send you the replay, I'll send you the links to the assessments. Okay? I'm just going to make a note because I want you guys to, uh, to get on it and start moving this ball forward. Then get a quick win. Okay, you can see the quick ones on our website. Start the culture coaching do the uh, neuroscience of navigating change. And then we have Rick Thompson from uh, Rising Medical. Within one day of the training, over 33% um, of the company, the entire company asked for more responsibility. We use these tools to drop into the brain. Okay, next, and then we're gonna go into the tools. Schedule a strategy session, take the growth assessment, capture a quick win, start sales coaching, from our initial work at our sales and marketing intensive, you can see that that's box number, oh gosh, let's see, uh, two, three, box number three, secured an eight digit account, received the largest inbound lead in history. So now that we know kind of what the path is, let's go and let's break down for each one. So as we look at the leadership track, wanting to get that revenue up, you know, uh, profit up, et cetera, here, here's the recipe. Identity and behavior-based 360, you've got to do those. Leadership coaching, leadership code of conduct, all the different feedback tools, conflict clearing, because I cannot tell you how much conflict avoidance I see out there, motivating with safety, belonging, mattering messages, high value, low value, effective delegation, effective meetings. I'm going to show you when we're going to do each of these based on your priorities. So here's the recipe, and now here's some graphics. So notice we have three columns on the screen. We have the assess, we have the act, and we have the ROI. So let's start at the assess. The circle picture that you're looking at where it says creative, reactive, task, relationship. This is where we start to understand how we show up as a leader. What our reactive tendencies are. Are we uh, controlling? Are we distancing and protecting? Are we um, overly compliant and we're trying to please everybody? That's not effective either. So the bottom half shows us our reactive tendencies, um, basically reactive behaviors that we want to work on. The top half of the circle is creative competencies. The creative competencies are things that we actually are working on developing. Uh, greater strategic vision, um, being more results driven, um, mentoring and cultivating others more powerfully, um, being deeper in our relationships, being more authentic, having higher uh, integrity, et cetera. So based on how yours looks, we now know where to do most of the work. Now let's scooch to the right. If we were to, to uh, look at this as um, a pie with, uh, with two halves that are vertical, the task orientation, look at this person. This person is doing okay on the tasks, um, although they have a lot of um, controlling, et cetera, behaviors. So how good are we at actually delivering tasks versus how strong are we in building relationships to get those tasks done? Anyway, high level, but what I want you to think about is as we assess the key leaders and understand the structure of their identity, we then know what programs to put in place. Look below it, leadership levels, 
What's great about leadership levels is you can do this for your whole company. And as you start to lay out what a particular uh, role is in the company, you can start to understand, aha, based on this role, here's the leadership level the person needs to show up at. Level one, wait to be told. Level two, uh, ask what to do. Level three, recommend and act, et cetera. And as we have clear expectations, we can then know what tools to put in place. Now, a couple of the really key tools we're gonna put in place across every leadership scenario is safety, belonging, mattering. And we have an infographic here that you can see where we can look at what behaviors, here comes the action part after the assessment. When we look at what behaviors we have in leadership and how we can change those behaviors and shift those behaviors to give people a richer emotional experience. Here's the thing, the action plan should be to give people the emotional experience that they need to do their best work, plus the tools and the processes. So someone can be craving the experience of mattering in the organization. We can follow the safety belonging mattering decoder here. We can give them the experience of mattering, but things aren't gonna change until maybe they're not effective at delegating, until they get the effective delegation tool and maybe their meetings are ineffective or they invite too many people, we give them the effective meeting tool. So we are cultivating and elevating people. Next, then also leaders need to spend a fair amount of time <laughs> crafting what people's emotional experience is in a larger scale. So reframing is one of the tools. And remember on the prior slide, we showed you all the different tools or the high level tools and in the emotional resilience type category, this is where we have reframing. Um, maybe you had a challenger last quarter. Great. We learned some great things last quarter. Here's how we're going to go forward. Instead of, oh, last quarter was so bad. Oh, we're so scared, et cetera. No, we need to actually focus people on the outcomes that we want them to create. So when we start using the assess, act, ROI methodology, that is how we start to get the ROI that we want in leadership. Uh, we're going to take a, a break for questions in just a sec. So we want to look at how can we foster collaboration? How can we help people better understand the needs, the emotional needs, and the moods of their teammates? Because when we do, we increase productivity. We can tell apart or understand what's a high value added activity, what's a low value added activity, and we can get the level of productivity that uh, Alberto got for his team, which is now the top performing sales team in the world for Procter & Gamble. Let's take a question break. Um, we're gonna take Robert first, and then we're gonna pop over to Steven, and then we're gonna pop over to Amanda, and then we're going to um, zoom along. So Robert had pre-sent, how do you go about changing rigid command and control structure into one that accepts the concept of empowered, self-organized smart tribes? Okay, Robert, great question, needless to say. So we've got this rigid command and control culture. We want empowered, self-organizing smart tribes. You know what we have to find out? The big cheese, the, the top of the, of the org chart, what do they care about most? And if it's command and control, they might care mostly about business performance, about uh, profitability, about um, growing revenue. Please find out, Robert, what their top priorities are. Now, grab either Smart Tribes or Power Your Tribe, our two latest books, and look in the appendix section. And the appendix session section has the ROI from all of our clients. And we showed you just nine ROI measurements a few minutes ago. Pick those particular ROI measurements that will most resonate with senior leadership and say, this is why I want to start using these programs. And then take a small group, a little grassroots effort, and start to use the Smart Tribes tools with that group. In 90 days, you're gonna to start to see some more benefits and you're gonna be able to show the big cheese that this is actually working. So when we have rigid command and control, we often need to have a little grassroots effort and a team, make them an internal smart tribe within the whole culture. Then when we start seeing the ROI, executive leadership says, oh, it's not squishy, I actually get it. And we might wanna watch out for certain words that they don't like. 
Uh, so use the words that they do like. If they talk about peak performance, then let's call this the peak performance um, lab, you know, the peak performance team, the whatever, the peak performance experiment. We want to make sure that we use vocal mirroring. Okay, good. So we're going to have to show them some proof internally. That way uh, it becomes not squishy. Stephen, what is more effective, using consensus to achieve cultural change or a process that encourages unfiltered, vigorous discussion, conflict, with a commitment that people will get to agree and disagree, but everyone commits to get on board regardless of the outcome? <laughs> um, the latter. <laughs> consensus, um, here's the thing, feel into the energy of this. So there's domination, where one person wins and everybody else loses, right? There is compromise, where everybody's kind of like, ah, I had to give something up, but I'm still not very satisfied with it. And then there's collaboration, where we all say, hey, you know what? We all want to get to the same goal. We might have different ways that we want to get there, but the goal is the goal. Are you guys familiar with Jeff Be Bezos's command and, excuse me, commit, uh, disagree and commit? What's cool about disagree and commit at Amazon is that you might disagree with how somebody wants to do something, but you are committed to the same goal. So whoever has full ownership for that particular outcome, we support them. And if it doesn't work, we don't get to say, I told you so, all right? So disagree and commit is, I might disagree with your approach, but it's your area, you own it. I commit to fully support you. So building that collaboration, which is so powerful, really requires um, that we make sure that we get on it and we support people in moving forward together. I'm gonna take one second. I just heard from David, thanks David, that there is a problem with the link. So um, I'm going to send a quick text. Okay, great. Thanks, David. Um, strategy session now. Now here's something else that you can do, um, dot com. Here's something else you can do, David. You can just go to our website and under contact, uh, you can request a strategy session too. So thank you. It looks like something happened to our uh, connection. Oh, <laughs> thanks, Stephen. <laughs> okay, thanks, David. All right, good, everyone's all uh, chatting away. All right, one more question. Amanda, building a smart tribe sounds great, but we all have day jobs. Good. How can we make in incremental progress? Thank you, Amanda. Um, let's just go back to um, let's go back to this list. Let's go back to the ROI. Even Amanda, pick which one you want. Pick which ROI you want. Okay, and then based on the ROI that you want, pick the tools that you want to use. Seriously, and just, just pick off one ROI at a time and the tools that you want to use for that. And if you guys aren't working with us yet, if you're not coaching with us or training with us yet, uh, Smart Tribes Playbook um, has all these tools in it. And it is smarttribesinstitute.com slash STP. Okay. And more on that in a sec. All right. So um, let's go ahead, and anybody else has questions, please type them into chat. We're gonna talk about the culture track in a sec. So for the culture track, I want us to really focus on how are we doing here? How connected are people? Are we crystal clear on our strengths and our culture? Have we done an employee engagement survey? The quick one that we recommend, Safety Belonging Mattering Index, super effective, super quick, employee engagement survey, 10 questions. That then shows you, and the quick wins are on our website. You can see them right on the homepage. You can see them also under services. Um, and what I want you guys to think about is, when was the last time you did an employee engagement survey? What did you learn? And then what specific tools did you map and roll out and programs to actually increase their emotional engagement. So within one day of STI's training, right, we had over 33% of our entire company ask for more responsibility. Here's the recipe. Culture coaching, 
compelling mission, vision, values, you guys. I was talking with a company yesterday, and they're adding 150 staff. And I was asking them, how are they going to keep their culture, right, the culture they have now that's working great, how are they going to scale that up? And they, they didn't have the answer. They thought people would just come on board and it would magically happen. It doesn't magically happen. We actually have to roll out a structured um, onboarding process, if you will, so that everybody understands you know, how we're moving forward. We need to have IDPs, we need to have performance motivation. We actually need to have a program to get people on board, okay? So let's look at assess again, assess, act, ROI. So assessment, up and to the left, the different colored boxes, that shows you the SBM index. And the SBM index is where we actually have an understanding of who is wanting what emotional experience per department. So the administrative column, the first column, those guys are good. They're okay. They're feeling fine. All right. They're doing pretty darn well. The only area that they're really having problems in, the, the most problematic, I would say, is um, number six, I'm motivated by and find the company's mission by the company's mission, vision, values. And then number seven, I receive acknowledgement and appreciation at work. But if you look at the middle, at the second column, the investments team, those guys are totally disengaged. So as we do this and we ask these 10 questions, digitally, of course, it's easier to tabulate, of each of the different departments, we then get a safety belonging mattering score per department for the company overall. Excellent. Then we can start to roll out our action plan. So from the safety belonging mattering index, the employee engagement survey, 10 questions, we then know which of the particular tools, Smart Tribe's tools to use to increase that experience of safety, belonging, and mattering. That is how we then increase the performance of those particular people in that particular department. And then of course, it ripples to the company overall. So if you look at the bottom left, you'll see an impact description template. The impact description is like a job description, but it's much more effective. Our clients are now finding when they use impact descriptions to recruit, they are able to recruit much faster. One of our clients just went from 40 days down to 20 days from the open rec to the job accepted using impact descriptions. Please consider them. What's helpful about an impact description is it actually shows the person, it's, it fires off the things we talk about for emotional engagement, oxytocin, dopamine, serotonin. It fires them off in the brain of the person because we use words and categories and the structure that we show you here on the screen to actually bring that person into a glorious future where they're having the emotional experience of the role in your company. Why this role matters, who you are, who we are, who your internal customers are, how this role makes a difference. And the people that don't get fired up from that job posting aren't your people. When you start using impact descriptions, you will have fewer candidates, but they will be candidates aligned with who you are and who your company culture is. So we use the cultural game plan. We can understand then how to create the experiences of safety, belonging, and mattering based on what our employee engagement says, and then we get the ROI. Another key aspect here is performance motivation. We don't call it performance management. Performance management is sort of, you know, herding cattle, trying to get people to behave a certain way. Performance motivation is creating intrinsic motivation. I want to rise up. Uh, it's not a carrot stick game that you have to play. And the three pieces of performance motivation are impact descriptions, super important, individual development plans. I see how I'm safe and how I belong and how I matter here. I see how I can grow and evolve here. I'm gonna stick around. And then of course, performance self evals, evaluating yourself. We're doing some work with Yale University. Guess what the number one stress is in the workforce? Ah, performance reviews. So when we do performance self evals, we have all the templates for you, all the Smart Tribe templates are available. Um, they're all in Smart Tribes Playbook, or if you work with us, you get Smart Tribes Playbook. And then you have this respectful, cool, growth-oriented, collaborative, beautiful experience of performance reviews. 
instead of being freaky, scary, and stressful. Culture. Okay. We're going to take some questions because I know we've, we've got people um, asking some, some stuff coming up. So six months in culture coaching, here's what server technology did, and it got them the best places to work, which is really important because a lot of people are moving into Reno, like big employers, and server tech, which is smaller than the Amazons and the Googles of the world, needs to keep their edge in recruiting. Best place to work, revenue production retention levels at record highs. This is in six months, you guys. Um, refreshed mission, vision, values, super motivating, creating a deep experience of tribe. We are tribal beings. Executive team deeply aligned, has the structure, the path, the process to evolve. Company buzzes. You walk through the halls, seriously, it like buzzes with excitement. <laughs> and employee engagement is at record highs. So here's the thing. Your people are awesome. Are you helping them step into that awesomeness? That's why we create a smart tribe. It, it's far less stressful, it's much more fun, and it's much better for business. So this is an invitation, you guys. Today's an invitation. Um, okay, let's take a question. Oh, good, okay. Um, let, we're gonna take, um, I'm gonna say it's Carolina. Um, I hope I'm saying that right, versus Carolina. I think it's Carolina. How do these tools work for small companies? We have 27 employees, thank you. Um, we actually, Carolina, and pardon me if I'm saying your name wrong, um, we actually use these tools um, with companies, gosh, we've got one client that has seven, eight people. So these are tools to help humans move forward together and for humans to align together. So alignment, you probably got, guys have probably noticed, you can keep people really aligned and in high communication, when you have a team of three or four or so, and you're all in a small workspace and you're talking all the time and you're all super connected. Once you start to get to separate offices, separate functions, which happens at the five, six, seven, eight people thing, you have to start really working on the connection and the engagement. So this works for humans. Um, our, our client that has the smallest team right now is eight. And they started with us with about 1.2 million or so in revenue. And then in the second year, they went to two and change. And now in their third year, they're approaching uh, four million. And then we're gonna jump up to 10, but we had to get a bunch of stuff in place. So it works with smaller teams, that is fine. It's actually easier um, when you have a team that is, uh, gosh, I would say 200 or fewer. We're working with a lot of companies that have you know, 400, 2,000, 5,000, whatever plus, and it just takes longer to roll that out. You have to get a lot more internal champions. Good, okay, we're gonna take uh, Jason and then we'll get to you, Stephen, in just a sec. Jason, um, I'm a sales leader. How can I implement these tools while still getting the deals done <laughs> to hit our number? Good, Jason. Um, so here's what Scott did, and Scott had the, t the sales testimonial. What Scott did was that Again, just like I said for Amanda, pick out the ROI that you want most, right? Really look at the ROI that you want most. He had sales ROI being a higher priority. Um, one sales ROI, and then he wanted more inbound leads. That was, that was what he wanted to focus on. So we used meta programs, chapter seven, Empower Your Tribe. We used meta programs very intensely. We worked on all the marketing material. That's where we put all the energy initially for the first nine months for the first nine months. We put the energy on the marketing messages and then we put the energy on the sales process because every single sales process I've ever seen in 30 plus years could use some improvement. One of the key areas that we find that we need to improve is what we call the X factor. The X factor is what do we really need, what really closes in our pipeline? So I'm, I'm gonna do really easy math. If it's a, a million dollar quota, right? And if you close 20% historically, you need to have five times, right? 20% times five. You need to have five times active in your pipeline so that you close a million and meet your quota. So five times active though doesn't mean five times the contacts. It means five times at the probability level that gets you close to closing. Our clients have a range based on the client and it's 40% to 60% probability in their CRM 
makes it count towards their X factor. If the probability is lesser than that, it doesn't count towards their X factor. So um, let's ask uh, Jason if you have more sales questions, um, type them in and when, when we get to the sales section. So pick out the tools, pick out the ROI that's most important for you and map that to the tools. Get a strategy session call with us if you're not working with us already and we can direct you to the tools in the Smart Tribes playbook. Okay, Stephen, how would you break through the stifling effects of PC in a greater culture that keeps unfiltered but respectful conflict from happening? Unfiltered but respectful conflict happening. If you guys haven't read our latest blog on Forbes, um, Are You Killing Your Career uh, with Conflict Avoidance, please please read it. One of the problems with being politically correct is that we have massive amounts of conflict avoidance and people aren't dealing with conflict. So conflict avoidance comes in usually three flavors. Um, passive, not dealing with it, hoping it will go away. Overly compliant because we are fearful if we rock the harmony boat that the relationship will fall apart. Well, if you, if you have that feeling, then your relationship probably isn't that strong, right? Because you guys have noticed, as we navigate conflict respectfully, we actually strengthen our relationships. Or we go command and control, everybody out of the way, you know, and we get super dominant in um, conflict situations. But you've got to look at why you have conflict in your organization. Often conflict comes from low communication, inconsistent communication, mixed messages, um, low accountability, right? People not dealing with following through on their particular areas. So those are two of the big whoppers. So I just want to make sure that you guys read that. It's our current blog on Forbes. You could just type in Forbes, comma Ford, conflict, and you'll probably find it real quick. Or just go to just go to the Forbes website in our section. So teaching people about conflict routing that blog around, Stephen, would be a great way for people to start to look at how to have respectful conflict, because conflict actually leads to innovation. Conflict fosters collaboration. Conflict breaks groupthink. And if you guys have read any of our work on unconscious bias, groupthink, huge problem, right? It really messes up our ability to collaborate and innovate. Um, okay, uh, let's scooch on. And then we're going to get to Adam, um, Julia, and Patrick in, in a sec. Sales and marketing. Here you are, Jason. So I want to look at, we have to take that assessment, that state of the world assessment. So when we do the strategy session, uh, and if the topic is sales and marketing, we send you roughly, off the top of my head, maybe 20 questions. And those 20 questions help you uncover the state of your sales and marketing. Then almost always we go right to a sales and marketing intensive because this is where we have the problem. Quick thing for you, Stephen, um, read our unconscious bias uh, work in um, Power Your Tribe and write that to your folks. Also search for Forbes, comma forward, unconscious bias and write the article. Coming back. The quick win, like each of the quick wins, the leadership assessment quick win to understand the state of our leaders, the quick win on our website for safety, belonging, mattering, our cultural index, if you will, the quick win for how we turn around our sales and marketing. This then gives us the recipe. This is what we did for TelAid, for Scott. This is what we do for the vast majority of our clients that want to propel their sales and marketing to the next level. So let's go into what the recipe is, and then we'll look at the different flavors, okay? So um, sales and marketing coaching, right, to implement what we learn and to make sure that everybody's clipping along, right? The, the brand trust uh, assessment, the customer journey process and grid, the marketing optimization, et cetera, safety, belonging, mattering, meta program-based messages, super crazy important for marketing. Um, shortening the sales cycle, understanding why brains buy, and then, of course, understanding that X factor stuff I talked about, streamlining the sales process, we use these tools for sales and marketing. All right, so 
the number one challenge that I find when we're working with our clients on sales and marketing is really in the area, and please type your questions into chat, guys, is in the area of who are we selling to, right? So we understand the customer, we understand what they want, and then it's timing, right? It's the right customer uh, with the right offer at the right time. You can't really control the time. You're not inside their corporation. However, you can control who you're messaging to and what you're offering them um, and how you're messaging. So when we actually understand the customer's emotional experience and the customer's safety, belonging, or mattering trigger, why are they buying? Are they buying to get the experience of safety or belonging or mattering? That's the only reason people buy. Think about all the products or services you buy. It's for an emotional experience. Remember the uh, research I've mentioned in the past, um, Carnegie Mellon, Stanford, UCLA, Harvard, Columbia, NYU, 90% of our decisions, of our behaviors are driven, are dominated by our emotional brain. We have to take that into consideration in sales and marketing, in leadership, in culture. Okay, we understand what the client's experience is, the prospect's experience, the customer's experience, whatever. We then start to message, okay, Using that, messaging is over to the far right. So we did the assessment, then here's the act and ROI. Um, we want to make sure that we're using safety, belonging, mattering, meta programs, what we call with them, right? What's in it for me? And then curve. You have to have three of the five cur um, curve elements. And the curve elements are curiosity, urgency, relevance, value, emotion. So we have to have three at least of those five when we are communicating in sales and marketing contexts so that our client can actually or our prospect can actually connect with us and say yes, right? We want them to be connected, engaged, and have the experience of being secure with us. We also, though, look at the center column, need to understand our trust factor of our brand. What emotional experience are we telling people they're going to get from us? And then marketing, you know, it's the thing that everybody loves to hate because we know that some of it works, but it's hard to figure out why it works and when, and it's a little bit cosmic, making sure that we always go through that due diligence checklist before we spend a bunch of money on marketing. Okay. Let's take a couple more questions. Um, I want us to think about doubling our marketing effectiveness, doubling our response rate, right? Getting a higher digital response rate, receiving inbound leads. That's everybody's holy grail. <laughs> Getting the phone to ring off the hook, right? So um, let's do, um, I'm gonna get to Adam, Julia, and Patrick. And then um, guys, please type in any other questions into chat, into chat. Okay, here we go, Adam. Our company is doing really well in terms of product development and sales. Most of the functional areas are performing well and our revenue is growing, but the overall culture is not good. There's no buzz or good vibes. No one seems really happy to be here. What are some concrete ways to determine why that is and how to fix it? I mean, yeah, free lunches and stuff are great, but that's not gonna cut it. So yes. It doesn't matter if you have a ping pong table and you have donuts in the morning, right? Those are nice little perks, but those don't shift the emotional experience. Adam, please do a safety belonging mattering index. Um, go to our website, go to the, uh, click on the uh, quick wins and get the uh, safety belonging mattering index quick win. We'll work together on it. You'll do the survey. We'll help you unpack it. We'll create your cultural game plan. It'll all be handled in two coaching sessions and one survey. Easy peasy. You have to understand why people aren't in. They're, they're not connected. They're not engaged. Um, we have to fix that. Because otherwise, what, what's happening for you guys isn't going to be sustainable. Okay, please, please, please find out what the emotional experience is. Because you guys have so much stuff working at them. I, just, I don't want it to break, but also I want you guys to keep growing. Um, Julia, I'm fascinated by the idea of cognitive biases. Here we go. Um, 
I saw the piece in Forbes, you wrote about it. Could you expand a bit on how biases form? Do smart tribes have fewer biases? Okay, there are a bunch of different biases. Um, we have the obvious ones, right? Um, gender biases, um, racial biases, age biases, et cetera, cultural biases. And then we have cognitive biases. There are over 150 cognitive biases based on Neil Jacobstein's research. Here's what matters. We find that there are a handful, gosh, eight to 10, that we see all the time in the workplace. And the answer, Julia, is yes. Smart tribes have fewer biases for two reasons. One, they're aware of them and they use our bias busting process and checklist. And number two, they talk about them. So two that I see all the time, tell me if you guys resonate with these, um, optimism bias. I had this uh, just a while ago and my team busted me on it, thank goodness. We were gonna uh, create a new website and I said, oh my gosh, this is gonna be totally easy. you know. And they're like, uh, it's not, Christine. <laughs> Here's what's gonna be involved in it. And I was like, oh, oops, optimism bias. And then I said, oh, so this should take like what? You know, three weeks? They're like, uh, no, it's gonna be at least six. So the second bias I had was planning fallacy. So optimism bias is the tendency to expect things to turn out much better than is realistic. Planning fallacy is, just like it sounds, thinking things will not take as long, right? Confirmation bias, very popular. When someone has made up their mind and you give them some new data that helps them uh, possibly reconsider they're rigid thinking and they can't see it. Emperor has no clothes, okay? No, the emperor has clothes. Everyone's clapping, everyone's saying how great the clothes are. The emperor doesn't have any clothes on, you know? So confirmation bias is inability to take in new data, new information to change one's potential view. So the problem with cognitive biases is that they actually have been helpful to us, possibly in the past. The number one bias that's been helpful is called the like me bias. The like me bias. And the like me bias is just like it sounds. I want to be with people that are like me. I want to be with people who look like me, who act like me, who like the same things. That is not great for collaboration and it really messes up diversity in your organization. And if you look at Carnegie Mellon's research on um, collective intelligence, where three people can do the work of five without burning out, you must have diversity. So everybody, um, thanks for bringing that up, Julia. Smart tribes do not have nearly as many biases because we work on them. And when we see a bias come up, we bounce our decision before we make it off of someone who is not like me. And then we also pause and say, do I have to make this decision now? And we learn about the decision-making process in the smart tribes training where we understand how many decisions a person can really make per day and where we start to tax both the thalamus and the prefrontal cortex. All right, we have a couple of things coming in on chat. Um, it's an, uh, thanks, Alfredo, it's an amazing model. But do you have a Spanish version of all these tools to work with Mexican organizations? Um, no, Alfredo, we do not. But we did work with 2,000 people at Procter & Gamble in Mexico City, and um, I spoke more slowly. <laughs> So when we work in Europe and Asia and Latin countries, um, I have to slow down. Um, so no, but if you would like to collaborate with us on creating Spanish versions, email us, go to our contact page, because I would be curious about that. I would be. Um, okay, cool. Patrick, and then we're gonna go to our next topic. Patrick. I've considered getting a leadership coach before, but can never seem to get out of the job long enough to really look into it and understand how it works, what the benefits really are, how do you get started? Isn't there a huge time suck in onboarding a coach? Um, gosh, uh, there is not a huge time suck in onboarding a coach. Uh, the, if it's a good coach and they do an assessment like we do, we very quickly understand the structure of your identity. Then if we do an assessment on your company, we very quickly understand what's happening in your company. 
since we've worked with over a thousand companies over the past 30 plus years, chances are really good. Whatever challenge you have, we've seen. And if we haven't seen it, we know people to talk to who have. So um, the main thing is you don't have to be coachable. You have to want to grow. And what we find is that when we work with our coaching clients, they do get five to 15 more hours per week for strategic time because they start to delegate more effectively, move power down and across the organization. I can't stress how important this is. We must move power down and across the organization if we're ever going to let the executive suite and the senior leaders step into how they really need to be performing. It is a disservice to hold the power tightly at the top. It, it prevents a company from effectively scaling. So I'll get off my soapbox. But um, I want us to really look at how we're doing that. So everybody, in my experience, needs a coach. I have two coaches. So I'm a coach, but I have coaches. If you have a coach that's not being coached, I would be skeptical, right? Because it's like, oh, yeah, um, I run a dairy farm, but I don't consume my own product. It's like, what's that about? Right. So start to look at the ROI here for a second. Ponder. <laughs> what what's your priority here, you guys? Type in your questions because we're going to wrap in just a sec. Think about your priority. Think about what ROI will move the needle for you most. And if you say, well, I want one leadership and I have two culture ones and one sales and marketing one, that's OK. We can work with that. I'm not worried about that. All right, and I hope the Strategy Session Now link is working. David, I cannot thank you enough for helping us figure that out. Okay. Um, oh, okay. It looks like we have our web hoster. Please use regular link. Okay. So, um, uh, okay, so let me get you that in just a sec. All right, so here's a recap of what we learned, right? We're building a smart tribe. We get fast, tangible ROI due to our potent, easy to learn neuroscience-based tools. Proven process. Organizations just like yours have benefited from a smart tribe. So you can do it yourself. And if you do it yourself, though, you, it's important for you to please subtract 62% from each of the ROI items. We have over 650,000 smart tribes on the planet right now. A chunk of those have been done themselves, and they've reported in. And add approximately 12 months to each milestone. Um, often that, that does reduce the revenue 37% and does add 487 more hours. Can you tell I'm a statistics geek? Yes. So do it yourself if you want, cool, or have us help you. Here's what to do next. So um, strategy session now here. I'm going to um, give you guys a link that's actually working. And it is uh, smarttribesinstitute.com. And let me give you that. I'm going to pause on the share. Think of your last questions right now, OK? Think of your final questions. Great. So you want to go to strategy hyphen session. So I'm just going to get out of here for one sec, and I'm going to go to one quick thing. Oops. And we will figure this out ever so quickly. OK, great. So smarttribesinstitute.com strategy hyphen session. Let me just type this into the chat. Thanks, guys. OK. OK, great. And now we're just going to zoom back. OK, so let's come on back. Any final questions? Any final questions before we go? So here's what we want to do. Um, go to our the updated link, smarttribesinstitute.com slash strategy hyphen session, and then, or reach out to Cindy at smarttribesinstitute.com, 
And then last, work with STI.com if you simply just want to sign up for our newsletter. Thank you for your time today. Thank you for your questions, right? And um, we will send you the replay and the uh, three assessment links that I promised. And we will help you get your Smart Tribe when you are ready. Thanks so much, everybody. We're going to sign off for now.